it's the this is the mat. This um, is yeah, I you hear not so much anymore because they're not using the rods as much, and I don't use the rods as much. I mean, Philip finds it easier to. It's you know, kids want to work faster, so it's it's kind of a pain to build everything with the rods. So we use the rods mostly for checking, like check with the rods, and you let me know if you're correct. So, or, um, or I'll check with the rods, I'll build it with the rods, you build it with the rods, and then we'll come back together and we'll see who's right, or see if we, we know where, where we think we made the mistake. So we correct a lot with the rods, but unless I'm introducing a new concept, we don't use them that much anymore. Um, even my kids, you know, they don't, they, they don't have to. We just got them this time because when you are playing, you said it's fun to play. But probably they're not used, like, if, if he does fraction on its own, it's fine. If you ask him square on its own, it's fine. But when you start mixing and changing, this is when, like, I get a headache. And because he's not used to it, I feel like he's getting a headache. Yeah, so the substitution game is really good. And then, and then playing these kinds of things are really good because what we do um, in math, and that, I think that really keeps us from being understanding really how it works and how it's all related, is that we don't, um, we do keep fractions on their own, right? And we do keep squares on their own. And we do, I mean, that's how, that's how normal math is taught. And that keeps people from really understanding what's going on how all of this really is just the same thing. Like. Yeah. Like this, this is one thing. This one thing is, this one thing is that there are three greens and a blue. Yeah. Okay, that's one thing, but how we talk about it, this is like, you know, we could talk about it as green, you know, three squared, we could talk about it as, um, we, could, we, we, could, we could say one third of three squared is one of these. We can talk about it, this whole thing. We could talk about the difference between two of these and one of these. We could talk about adding them all up. We could talk about multiplying, but is this one thing though? That's just one thing. And all of the other stuff is just how uh, the language we use to talk about it. But if we don't combine them, if you don't see it, then you don't see that this is one thing. This is just one thing. And that's the part that like, that's the part when you're like, oh, it's all just same stuff. The fractions and subtraction are the same and fractions and division are the same and fractions and multiplication. And, and then, you know, so this, this is all one thing. Yeah. So that's my thought. I mean, like, we need to do it a lot. And then they, that's where they learn flexibility and the security that, like, we can just go back here. We know for what we know for sure, there are three green things make one blue thing. Or three threes make nine, however you want to call it, whatever you want to say. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I know Union was here. I don't know who else coming. I'll give it a few more minutes. So we are going to play the substitution game again. And this time we are going to make substitutions kind of like we did last week with money, but we're going to do it with one number and we're going to count in different ways. So that's what we're going to do. This is, this is learning how to count. So we have 49 here. I'm going to erase this and make it smaller. And I'm going to put that text in black. So 49. So we're going to count up to 49. And how we're going to do this, and I have the rods here because if you don't understand, I wasn't sure who was coming. We will build it with the rods, and then we will write it down what we built. So I need a number between one and five. Somebody pick a number. Two. We're gonna count to 49 by twos, boys and girls. So probably what we wanna know is, who knows what squares are? 
I do. I do. Okay, so we have two squared. What is two cubed? Um, two times times two, which is two to the third power. Okay, so two times two times two. So we have two of the twos here, and then we need to multiply those by two. So now we have two of the two times twos. So we have how much? Two cubed. Which is? Eight. Eight. So, okay. So we need to get to 49. And we're going to start off with, um, we'll do it first with squares. And how many two squares can we get in 49? Um, seven. Does everyone agree? I can't build them all. I agree. So yeah, two squares and 49. So two squared is four. So if two squared is four, how many can we get in 49? Um, 12. Okay. So Maddie and Tina, do you agree that it's 12? Or Frankie, do you agree that it's seven? Or is it some other number? It's 12. Fra Fra uh, Tina and Maddie? Um, I don't really know. I Okay, so there's, so we have two squared is four. So how many, we know that there's at least 10 in 40, because 10 times four is 40, or 10 and 49, because 10 times four is 40, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, I understand it now. Okay, so we're gonna count the two squares in 49, so we've got, so do we agree that it's seven or that it's 12? Who thinks there's, 12, two squareds in 49. I think there's 12, two squareds in 49. I okay. think it's 12. So we have 12 times two squared plus what? One. Plus one. Okay, how many two cubes? Let's, so let's count it and let's do two cubes now. How, how many two cubes are there? So we know that two squared is four. How much is two cubed? Two times two times two. Which is eight. So we wanna know how many eights there are, which is two cubed. So how many eights are there in 49? Do we all agree there's six? I do. I do. Okay, so we have six of the two cubes plus what? Are there twos left over? One. There's a two left over? Is there anything else left over? I said one. One. So we have, so if we're going to count by twos with two cubed, so we have, there's a, there's six two cubed plus a two plus one. Um, I don't really think that's correct. Okay, what do you think it is? I think the two is wrong. I think the two is wrong, yeah. We should just have um, six and two cubed plus one, not plus two plus one. Okay. Does everyone agree with that? I do. Yeah. We got a yes on everyone. So we have, so what is six times eight? 14. 
48. And we can count those up. If we didn't have, we can, we can do this with our rods and we can put six of these down. One, two, three, four, five, six. And, and we can measure that and make sure that this really does equal Forty nine. I think it does. This is five and we're one short. So we have This is one two cubed two three four five six and one left over. All right. What other number can we count by I'm going to leave the 49 up here just so that you are the 50 and we just know that we need one short of 50, or I can do this. All right, what another number? Between one, not one. So let's count by, this time let's count by. Let's do it by threes. So how many three cubes are going to be in 49. 1 Does everybody agree that's So what is 3 what is 3 squared? Um 3 times 3 Okay, can you give me a number? Um, what do you mean? Well, three times three, but what is three times three? Is it nine? Yeah. Okay. And we're going to cube that. So that means we need three times three times three. So what is three times three times three? 27. Okay. So he says there's one three cubed in 49. Is that correct? Well, there is a three cubed, but I don't think just one. So how many 27s are in, so how many 27s do you think are in 49? He's correct. There is only one. Okay. So we have a three cubed, and then how many three squared? So I'll write it down over here. So we're at 27, and we have to get to 49. So we're going to count by three squareds now. So now we need a couple of nines, or some nines in there. How many nines do we have? I think two. Well, yeah, two. Since it feels three, it'd be more. So do you guys agree that there's two three squared? Wait, let me think about it first. I agree. Yeah. Well, if we put one more nine in there, it's going to take us somewhere in the 30s. If it's 27, it's going to take us to 36, right? And if we had another nine, it's going to take us somewhere in the 40s, right? If we had another nine, it's going to take us somewhere in the 50s. That's too many. So it's going to be 36, 45. And one more nine is going to take us. All right, so we've got a three squared and a three cubed and a three squared. So we're going to 18, and that puts us at 45. Is there a three? Between 45 and 49? Um, yes, but that wouldn't give us the right answer. Well, I just need to know how many threes there are. We're going to count, we're going to count up all the threes first. So you've got a three cubed, two three squareds, 
and at least one three. Are there two threes? Um, no, just one. Okay, so we got a three. And then how many ones are left over? All right, so we have three cubed plus two three squared plus three plus one. Yeah. All right, so let's count this bugger by fours. Yay! All right, are there any four cubes in 49? So let's go with first, what is four squared? Uh, 16. 16. Okay, so we have four times four, and that'll give us 16, and we have 16 times four. Is that gonna take us more or less than 49? Um, that's gonna take us more than 49. So okay, so we have no four cubes. So we do have four squares. How many four squares in 49? Three, I think. Three, I think? Well, I see. Yeah. <laughs> she needs 16 times three. Yeah. It's three times six, which is 18 plus 30. So you think there's three? Are we all in agreement? Yeah. Are there any fours left over? No. No fours left over. Are there units after that? Yes. How many? One. One unit. All right, let's count it by fives. Are we all in agreement here? Yes. Okay. All right, let's count it by fives. How many five squareds in 49? Um, well, you have nine squares. Five. I assume it's not a, since there were no four cubes, I'm guessing there's no five cubes. So I'm going to go straight to five squares, five squared. So how much is five squared? We have 25. So how many 25s and 49? One. So we have a five squared plus what? How many fives? Um, four. Four times five. Do you guys agree? Maddie, do you agree? So five squared, so we have 25. Yeah, I plus, agree. Plus 20, that gives us... 45. And then we need how many ones are left over? One. One. Now, if you have, because um, we have some people that just came, we can absolutely, if you're looking at doing this and you have little kids, they can build, we know three times three. We can find nines, we can just line this up here, or if we do five times five, we can see that it's 25. And we can do two of these and one of these and see that there's only two patterns like this. We can't do two of the 
two oranges and a yellow, that won't fit in here. So even if they don't, we can give them the concept of squares and using the rods, they can play this and do this game, the same game, um, if we line up the total right here. So it, this is a game that the kindergartners can do, um, that first graders can do. It gets more fun. Lining up when you're doing this gets tedious for little kids. So it's more fun if they can actually do it and start and, and do the, the, the um, calculations in their head. That gets a little easier, but it can certainly be done, and they like playing games like this. Little kids like squares and cubes. At least mine do. Um, all right. You can count it by sixes. Um, Sonia? Yes. I, I don't really think the answer to the question you just did is correct. Oh, could you think that there might be more than one between 45 and 49? Yeah. I wasn't going to say anything. There is. There is four. I was waiting till when somebody would realize that. You were waiting too? <laughs> <laughs> I put the number up here and I let it go. So <laughs> just wait for someone to pick it up. All right. And, it, and I can make that mistake. If I made the mistake, you should point it out to me because, you know, I'm a mom. And, you know, when moms go have kids, they put hoses to their heads and they suck out brain cells. That's how it works. So, um, all right. So let's count by sixes. Well, wait, before we do that, before we count by sixes, I want to do something. I want to go through and I want to label all the twos with a um, with a T. Um, but I I thought we just did six. We have five squared plus four times five plus four. We don't have six squared here. I talked about it, but we didn't do it. Oh, okay. So I want to change this to, I'm going to change the twos. Well, actually, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to change it to, um, R squared. R cubed. And then I'm going to change this green one to G. The threes, I'm going to change it to G oh, cubed plus G squared. And then I'm going to erase this four and I'm going to put in a Uh, pink squared, and I'm going to erase the five and put in yellow. Do you guys agree with all that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Does that conf going from numbers to letters? That does that confuse? That doesn't confuse anybody. We're all good. Yeah. So, should the three in that line be changed to a uh, G as well? Yes. Should. Okay, so I want to hold on to these. Um, I'm going to select. Well, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do my snipping tool. I'm going to snip a picture of this, and I'm going to save it. 
as um, counting one, because we're going to bring these back later. And I'm going to minimize that. All right, now I'm going to erase and let's count by sixes. So 49, and now we're going to count by six. So are there, is there a six squared in 49? Yeah. How many? One. So the six squared plus what? Plus um, six times two. So two of the sixes. Is there anything left over? Plus one. Do we all agree? I agree. Yeah, I agree. Nobody disagrees? So we got 36 plus 12 plus one. All right. What about seven? Yeah. So seven squared is? Well, there's only one seven squared. Is there seven squared is 49. 49. Seven squared is 49. So that's it, we're done. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. No. Can we count it by eights? Yeah, we can, but we won't have any um, eight squared or eight cubed. Yeah, maybe. Let's just see what happens. Um, so, so let's do eight. Let's count it by eights first. So, eight times what? How many eights are in forty nine? Um, eight times six. So there's six, six. eights. Plus one. So we have six of the eights plus one. What if we count it by eight squareds? Um, you could do eight squared, um, which is 64, minus. Um, She's got some good thinking going on here. All right, eight squared minus what? Five. Eight squared minus five equals forty nine. Okay, is there another way to get to? Um, could I do this? Um, eight squared minus eight plus what? Negative three. Three. <laughs> plus three. Eight squared minus eight plus three. Yeah, that would work too. Or you could put plus negative three and then put it in brackets. So you're saying I could do eight squared minus eight minus Three. Is that what you're saying? I, I think that's 59 and not 49. Yeah. This one down here? No, yeah. the eight squared minus five. Eight squared is 64 minus five is 59. Oh, yeah. So now what do we need to do? Minus 15. So I need eights. Oh. Minus eight. Plus seven. 
Can I do this? Minus 2 times 8 plus 1. Yeah. yeah. Or I can do minus 8 plus what? Yeah. Or minus, more minusing. No, minus 8 minus 7. Okay, so we can go above and then backwards. By the way, this is basically the process of finding what we're talking about here is a difference of two squares. It's not exactly the same, but we're getting pretty close. So that doesn't show up till high school. But that's basically what we're talking about here. Okay, so we're at, let's go with count it by nines. Let's count it by nine squared first, and then we'll count it by, count up from nine and do it the regular way. So we have nine squared, which is what? Uh, nine times nine is 81. So we have nine squared, all right, 81, and we gotta get back to 67 by nines. How are we gonna get there? I mean 81? We're, yeah, thanks. I told you, I have, like, somebody needs to babysit me. Okay, 81. Why do we want to go back to um, 67? We don't. We want to go to 49, because I think 67 got in my head. This is our target number up here. Okay. Memory is weak in humans. I need a babysitter today. <laughs> so, 81, we're going 249. So, 9 from, 80, nine from 81 is going to give us what? Seventy-two. Okay, that's one. And then we're gonna seventy-two, sixty-three, fifty-four. So how many do we have? How many nines do we have? Oh, okay. oh. six. No, from, sorry, it's not right. Yeah. So you go from eighty-one to forty-nine. Forty-nine. Yep, we're going from 81 and our target number is 49. 32 is meant... then like zero. We have, we have three nines. So you, you think three? Yeah. So nine squared minus three times nine. Uh, and then... I think it's four. Plus five. Plus five? Yeah. Okay, so let's figure this out. So we have 81 minus 27, right? That's going to give us what? Five, sorry, not plus five. Minus five? Yeah. Are we in agreement? Yes. Can I do, what happens if I subtract four nines? What will I need to add? So if I have nine squared minus four more nines, what will I need to add? So if I subtracted five over here, but I didn't this time, this time I'm gonna subtract nine, 
right? So I subtracted three nines. At this time, I just subtract another nine, but I already subtracted five. Well, if I, I said, five. What, what will I need to add? Like, let's reason our way through this. From here to here, without figuring out and doing the math, I want you to reason from this spot right here to this spot here. I was just about to talk when you started talking. Okay, go ahead. I think you add four. Okay, can you tell me why I'm gonna add four? Because the nine and five, well, let me think again. No, 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 you, you were going just fine, keep going. You were doing just fine. Since we subtracted an extra nine, yeah, I think you add four. Do you guys agree with them? Yeah, we agree. No one disagrees? Okay. We don't have to figure it out. If we know if, now this only works, you can only reason your way through if you know for sure that this one is correct. If this one is wrong, if our calculation's wrong, like I don't know, if we're at 59, um, then, then this one won't be correct. But if we've reasoned, if this one is correct, we can reason from here to here without having to do calculations. All right, so we're gonna go through and instead of putting in the letter numbers for the rods this time, I want to go through and I'm going to change these to X. Oh, wait, I erased the wrong one. Who remembers what was in front of my eight? Six. You know what? So if I'm your mom, I'm going to take the work that we just did and I'm going to come back through and I'm going to erase this and I'm going to do exactly what I'm doing here and then I'm going to hand it back to you and have you solve all these for X. This is your own work. We might as well have you write your own math stuff. And um, so how would we go about, now that you know the answer, you know where this is going, how would we go about figuring this out? If we're coming back on the other side. So you know that your mom's going to hand you this. She's going to hand you x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals 49. How would you go about figuring that out? Okay, how did I not, how did I... Any, any guesses? Frankie. I have no idea how I would work it out. Tina? She wants to know. Um, 
Give me a sec. Aiden. Hold on. Uh, I think. So. Well, I. I try. What's the question? Um, okay, so I I guess what would come out kind What's of it? close to forty nine when you did all that stuff to it and work around that like. Like trial and error. Okay, so remember, um, you guys, most of you guys have been here, but we have done something called writing things in different forms. Who remembers doing that? Substitution. Yeah. Um, we wrote very early on. If we had um, uh, four plus one equals five, we could write that in a different form. We could write one plus four equals five, we could write uh, five minus one equals four, and we could write five, five minus you one did, equals four, right? You did five minus four equals four up there. I saw that, it's okay, I'll get there. You guys can all read mom, so that's good. All right. How would this help us, not this one, how would it help us do this one? So you guys have done um, we, one of Ben's favorite things. We've played this, the substitution game. If you played with Ben, you know, one of Ben's favorite tricks is to do and undo operations. He adds and then he takes away and it becomes zero. So we have some number here, right here, the six times X, and we added, a num we added one to it to get this one over here. So if we added one over here, if six X plus one, equals 49, what will 6x be equal to? 48. Six of the x is gonna, it's gonna be, we added one to this, and this is gonna be equal to 48. Now I could give you the rules for that, but it's this, but it's not gonna help us reason our way through this. So if six, so if we do this, let's say that, um, here we go, we have a mouse over here, and we have one. So we have over here three of these green ones is the same as a blue one. And we can write that as three green equals blue. So green is going to be how much? How much is one green? A third of blue. A th third of blue. We can find out what that is by dividing blue by So, a third of blue, we basically are going to divide blue by 1, 2 or 3. 3. 3. So if six of these X's are the same as 48, six X equals 48, how much is one X going to be? Eight. Well, let's go back to what we did over here. It's gonna be one sixth of, one sixth of 48? Yes. A sixth of 48. So we're going to need, in order to find that out, what do we have to divide 8 by? Or four, we're not going to divide 8. How much do we have to divide 48 by? We divide 48 by 
One, two, three, four, six. five, or six. six. By six. six. And that's going to give us eight. So then we know that this X over here is eight. So that's why we do this. We can divide here. But the reason is we're going to just do and undo operations. That's all we're talking about doing. So does that help you think about how you would solve them once you've made these? Yes, no, maybe, huh-uh. Yes, no, maybe, well, that what? Uh-uh. Yes, no, maybe, uh-uh. Just uh-uh, I don't get what you're doing. Yeah. You're at uh-uh, you don't get what I'm doing? I understand. Maddie, do you get what I'm doing? No, okay, so you, I would say, need to go back and work on writing things in different forms. That part of chapter three, so we talked about where does chapter three go in Gatenio? That is a huge chapter and writing and make sh making sure we understand different forms. So this is a good thing to do, but then we wanna practice writing these in different forms. We're gonna need to do that because it helps you, it solves lots of issues when you get here. Um, I can give you the rules, but you don't understand what's happening. So what I'm so we don't have to work on. We can still keep building these, but we want to get to the point where we can give them give you this portion, and then you can figure it out. So let's do this and change this back to um, erase. Who remembers what this one was? This was nine, right? I think this was nine. Is this nine squared minus? Yes. No, it can't be. Oh, maybe it was. Nine squared minus four times nine plus four. It is nine. Okay. All right, so let's figure this one out. Let's go back and let's see how we're gonna get Oh, wait, I'm going to leave this here. So I want to undo the operations and I want to get to zero. So I want to have um, zero equals zero on both sides. So I want to undo the operations that we just did. So I want to start with the easiest thing. If I added four over here, so let's say we started with zero, and the first thing I did was add four. We played the substitution game, and I broke some number apart, and one of the numbers I broke apart was a four, and I added four. How can I get the other side? If, I, I, if these two things are equal, if there's a plus four here, if I have this side is seven and this side is seven, and it's equal, can I take away four on both sides? Does it change the Does it change anything? The equal Does it change the equal sign? No. Right. That's because that's what we're concerned about is the equal sign. It can't lie. Right. Equal sign means same. So if we've added four here, if I get rid of this plus four over here. I need to get rid of the whatever this is. I need to get rid of plus four over here. So I need to take four away from here and here and then it all stays the same. So I can minus four and I can minus four here and it's this equal sign is the same. So now I have nine squared plus four times nine equals 45. Do we all agree? Does the equal sign still the same?
No. No, definitely not. <laughs> it should have been subtracted. I did subtract it. Oh, no, no, up no. here, this is subtracted. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So now, what can we do? What are our options for this 45? Trying to get to zero. So what is, what is one of the easiest things we could do? Multiply the four times nine. We can multiply the four times nine. Let's do that. Which is? Thirty-six. Okay, so we have nine squared minus thirty-six equals forty-five. I want to do something to both sides. It's going to make sure that the equal sign doesn't lie. What can I do? You can change the 9 squared into 81, and you can change the 45 into... Nine times five. Okay, so I'm going to change this to 81. And I'm going to change this to nine times five. So our goal is to get to zero. We want to do the same thing on both sides. Oh. So I'm going to put the 45 back. So all we yeah. did here was figured this. So I'm going to put the 45 back. So I would, I would add 36 to 45 and make sure if it equals 81, then it's right. Okay. So you're going to say I'm going to add 36 here. And I'm going to add 36 here. And I added 36 here because huh? there was a negative 36. So we're going to get, we got to get rid of this. So we took away 36. So we started with this number here and we took away 36. So I'm going to add 36 back there and I'm going to add 36 over here. Right? Because we're yeah. going to just try and get one number. We're trying to just get one number by itself. So yeah, we got 81 equals, is this 81? Yeah. All right. Now we can subtract 81 from both sides. And that gives us what? Zero. So all we're trying to do is think through doing and undoing what we did. That's all we're trying to do. And it doesn't matter how you get there as long as you're thinking about doing and undoing. But that's all when we do when we solve for x over here is we're trying to get just the x by itself and undoing it or finding out what it is. So we're just doing and undoing. So if we had something over here, we had some number and we added 1 to it. And when we added 1, we got 49. Well, before we added the 1, we must have had 48. Before we added these two x's, before we added here, before we subtracted 36, we must have had 81. So we're, all we're trying to do is reason through the, the problem and figure out what's happening. So you can think about this when you're building them, what it is that you're doing, so that you can undo it later. So moms and dads and teachers, um, and this is why I said this one is easier for kids when they get older. They can do, the little kids can do this part and build these. Um, and I wouldn't go straight for X. I would go back to putting the color numbers in. Um, 
but then as they get older, we need to start reasoning through. And this is, this is mostly just algebra. This is an algebra one working through it. But when you get to algebra, they'll give you the rules for doing it without having you reason your way through it. And we want to make sure that we're thinking about what's happening and why instead of just doing it. Any questions? None? I'd be interested in, in seeing how uh, they work on factoring this, uh, uh, this polynomial. Uh, how, how would you, you factor these? I'm not sure all of these are, well, I don't know. I mean, because I've been thinking about this, so I, I think that I'm interested in seeing how you do this, factoring this, because I've been, I started to think about that uh, for a couple of weeks uh, uh, without using the, uh, the rods or, or the blocks. How, I, oh, how we would factor all of these? You get... You, I'm, you, is that what you're asking? Like, how would we have, here, let's undo. Like, how we would go through and factor all of these? Yeah, factor the, the left side. Okay. Are all of them, the question is, are all of them, can we factor all of them? Who knows what we're talking about when we say factor? Who knows what she's talking about? Yeah, I, I mean, I do, but. Okay. Um, we can go there. You, Union, I'll save these. And then I think I will save this one too. And we can head there at another class. And we could talk about factoring. Like, I, um, I know how to factor that. I just want to see how you guided them through that. That's what I've been thinking. Um, I haven't, um, without the rods, I, I, there's, um, in Vedic math, there's a super easy way of doing it. Um, and so that's probably what I would use. It solves, and it's not a whole lot different than what Mortensen does. So that's what I would use. That's the way I would explain it. But I would first want to make sure, even though these things are really easy, um, I still think it's really important to make sure we understand what's happening and why. Um, so like vertical, very good yeah, like vertical and crosswise, it's super easy to do vertical and crosswise when you're doing multiplication, but if you, it's just another algorithm if you don't understand what's happening. So um, the goal is flexibility, and, and there's no right way to do it or wrong way. There's, there's ways that give you correct answers and not correct answers, and you want to find correct ways of doing things that work for you. So I would use the Vedic method of doing this, and we can do that probably not in this, like a beginning class. We could probably do it in a different class. But I will save these for that purpose. Where is my snipping tool? New. Any other questions? I, we did not come for the previous session, so is this what you have been doing? Um, no, this is, this is, um, this one is just what I did. Um, we kind of worked our way up. We did, so we did basic, then we did money, and we kind of did a little bit of, of heading towards quadratics and polynomials last time. And then um, this time with just learning how to count in different ways. And there's a lot we could do with this beyond what I just did. And when I actually go through and make the PDFs to go with these, I'll put more information and variations that you can do. And then the next time we do this, we're going to play um, the substitution game. But instead of substituting, we will start with one equation and we will play, we're basically going to play build the crazy equation game, which is substituting entire sections for other sections. Like we, you, well, you were here when we did that that one time.
we did a class very similar. So that's where we're headed, and that will be the last of this class. That is awesome. Yeah, I love, I, well, I just, there's so many, there's so much you understand by just playing the game and substituting out things um, and playing this way. Anybody else? Okay. Is, hey, Maddie and Tina, or Maddie particularly, did you find this, do you understand what happened and did you find it hard? I found it hard. You found it hard. Can you tell me what part was the hard part? Like what part did you wish you understood better? Uh, it would be the, you know, the, the sorry, Manchu. Uh, when you tried the last one, when you were trying to get to zero on both sides, he said, just multiply both sides by zero and you get zero. He didn't get what, what, what are you trying to do? Okay, so we're just trying to undo. And so, Mom, where I would, that, that's actually okay. He's younger. And so that makes perfect sense to me that that's where you would have trouble. So we would just want to go through and, and undo, do an undo. So, practice doing it, doing operations and undoing operations and writing them in different forms. And that's all we're doing. When we do, when we write it, so here. And people skip this and they shouldn't. Red plus white equals green and green equals red plus white. This whole thing that Catenio has you do in um, chapter three, you can make your equations really, really complicated and write all the possible different forms that you can come up with. This exercise should not be skipped. This is, in chapter three, what they're having kindergartners do, um, and everybody skips by this. This is what you're doing the first half of a first semester algebra course. And the little kids can do this, especially if they have the rods in front of them. And it's just doing and undoing operations. And it's really important that you do it. This stuff isn't, like when I set Philip down for this, the, one of the things that's surprising is how easy this is for him. And that is because we did, we just wrote things in different forms and we put boxes in and it seems tedious when you're doing it. Um, but it's, but it's really important work. And you, lots of people skip by it and you shouldn't. That is like, that chapter three um, and working with the letters is, that is a gold mine of material. And sh it just when he says write it in different forms, write it as many ways as you can and put things in different forms, like the more you do that, the better off you'll be. Anyway, that's my rant for the day. And that's why he has everybody start there, because it's a first semester algebra course. And it doesn't matter if you're in kindergarten or sixth grade. Everybody starts and should be doing chapter two and chapter three. All right. I'm done. Thank you, Miss Sonia.